Empire Metals has released its mineralogy and metallurgical studies on the high-grade giant sediment-hosted titanium discovery at the Pitfield Project in Western Australia. Their words, not mine. The explorer says the studies have identified a unique opportunity for on-site processing to deliver high value product that's a very punchy statement it went out to the market i'm delighted to be joined by the managing director sean bunn so sean in that statement you said that pitfield is a unique mineral system saturated with a particular titanium mineral titanite what is this why is it important yeah hi sarah the Look, this is quite amazing. The the discovery continues to, uh, you know, this giant mineral system continues to write its own rules. So basically, titanite, which is a titanium calcium silicate mineral, is only ever found in very uh, minor quantities in in you know amongst uh, you know normal igneous rock systems in other deposits. So we're talking about a mineral that might appear. You know, in in one percent of the uh, of the rock mass, you know, it's called it's, you know, you know, spleen. It's it's a gemstone almost in some places. So very unusual to find this. In in fact, the abundance of this is so amazing. We have about sixty seven percent of all of our titanium dioxide locked up in this mineral. It accounts for up to twenty percent of the rock mass in some of the samples we've been collecting. So. Uh, extraordinary, completely unheard of, and uh, that's why I think this creates a a wonderful opportunity for us to develop a processing route that is simple, low cost, and will get us into uh, uh, producing a very high grade titanium dioxide product. And that's fundamentally what the uh, what the announcement captures that we released uh, earlier this week. I just want to keep going back to this word unique because historically aren't most mineral systems, you know, part of a collective, there are similar systems elsewhere in the globe, or are you saying that you really do have one of a kind? Definitely saying we have one of a kind now, because you know, when you think about this, there are a number of factors at play here. So firstly, we're, we're operating in a sedimentary basin. So it's sandstones and it's siltstones. These are, uh, you know, feldspars, these are quartz type rocks, they're silicates. They, um, you know, they don't in themselves naturally contain a lot of uh, titanium minerals. Where did the titanium come from? It's come up through an hydrothermal alteration. In other words, hot fluids. Everybody out there says, well, that doesn't normally happen. It doesn't. It, it, it's not how ilmenite or rutile generally forms. So we've got clearly evidence that this titanium system is is unique in its own right it's a giant 40 kilometer long eight kilometer wide five kilometer deep big saturated titanium belt if you like or, or you know a target for us and two-thirds of the mineral in it is unique you know it's 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 almost rare so you know, go and write the uh, go write the geological rule books for us because uh, nobody else has ever found this. I'm wondering though, because there's one voice out there which is kind of dissenting. You know, does the composition of the discovery make it difficult to extract titanium? Um, the source rock. Can you extract the titanium? Commercially, you know, when it's going to take lots of processing costs to make the synthetic rutile. Well, not at all, because if you look at the facts, the facts are clear. I mean, we've got up to 10%, 10% TiO2 in the rock mass to start with, which is almost 10 times more than our, uh, the mineral sands producers are, are working with. So our starting point clearly is, is advantageous. It's sandstone. It's not a particularly hard rock. It won't take much to beneficiate. All of the, uh, the titanium minerals, including titanite, are naturally heavy, and the rest of the gang materials, the silicates like quartz, have a very low specific gravity. So, you know, a beneficiation process is is pretty obvious. And the wonderful thing, and and we actually put this in the appendix to our announcement. We actually talked a little bit about the chemistry. And if anyone goes and looks at what we're trying to point out here, 
the, the amount of acid that you use to dissolve titanite is exactly the same as, as the amount of acid that would be used to dissolve an ilmenite concentrate. So once we get up to that point, there are no, you know, it's, it's not that this is going to be more expensive than ilmenite, more expensive to treat than rutile. You know, that, that's, that, that's not clear in my mind when we look at the, the, the chemistry and the facts. So starting point, giant scale, high grade, soft rock, you know, no overburden, no stripping, close to port, and we have a mineral that is readily dissolvable at low temperature, low acid conditions, which is unlike ilmenite. And I think we've got a pathway, and you know, a very clear pathway to go to a very high grade titanium dioxide product. You know, we're, we're, we're aspiring to go all the way as we can and, and even be looking to produce a pigment quality product from this particular operation. So the word acid sounds ecologically unsound? Oh, not at all. The, the, it's, look, acid leaching has been around for, for millennia and the reality is, uh, you know, most of the acid that we produce or will need to uh, apply can be recycled. So there is, you know, there's always an element of residues that need to be managed, but they're neutralized. Uh, these are not uncommon problems, and we're dealing in a in a you know a jurisdiction, a mining jurisdiction that's extremely mature and and you know constantly dealing with these uh, you know technical management you know challenges. They work with the company. Governments are always supportive in terms of big developments like this, and Pitfield will be no different. Because I was going to ask you, the land that you have, do you have it in perpetuity? You know, and what are the locals and the local government saying out about a potentially massive mining operation on their doorstep? Well, the, 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 we're dealing with farmlands here. These are privately owned lands that belong to the farmers, and we're very respectful of that. There's also obviously the the you know the Aboriginal cultural heritage factors that have to be looked at across these sort of areas. The reality is, you know, we hold the expiration licenses. The licenses are renewable over periods of time. And once we have, def you know, defined an area that we wish to take to a mining operation, we apply for a mining license. Now the mining licenses run for, for multiple, you know, 25 years, you take out a license and renew it over similar periods. So, you know, perpetuity is a very, you know, far-reaching question. We would we would simply go through the licensing and permitting processes. We would talk to the farmers in terms of compensation if we have to buy some of the paddocks, and uh, we'll deal with the uh, you know with our Aboriginal uh, heritage uh, organisations. We are very you know we work very closely with the uh, with the group that's uh, currently looking at that area, and uh, you know that's how. That's how it's done in this part of the world. You know, it's 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 regulated. It's uh, clearly articulated how to go about this. And federal government money, West Australian government money, is being put into these sort of critical metal developments. Just down the road, by the way, Luca, one of the big mineral sands producers, has uh, has been developing a rare earth cracking plant, and that received a billion dollar, virtually no cost, if you like, low cost uh, interest loan from the federal government in Australia. So, uh, you know, government support for something like this is is there, ready to go when we are ready to uh, to implement a project. But it sounds as though you are taking steps to implement a project. Um, talk to me about building the demonstration plant, which is a, a pilot, not a production plant. You know, why not a production plant? What's holding you back from going all the way? Well, simply put, we, we obviously want to be careful. We don't want to, uh, you know, overinvest, overcapitalise until we have a much clearer understanding of the, the, the specific process steps that we want to apply. So the idea is the next six to 12 months, we do uh, you know, a lot of laboratory testing. We've got all the metallurgical samples that we need. We're fully financed and we've got the technical team that's come together to do that work. That allows us, that allows us to define the processing steps that we replicate, if you like, 
in a, in a demonstration plant. The demonstration plant then provides us much more detail. You know, it gives us the streams, it gives us the circulating balances, where the, the various chemicals go, where the various, you know, uh, you know, contaminants might appear in the system that we have to remove. And we end up with a product. And that product is something that won't be sitting in a, in a test tube. You know, it'll be in drums. So we can take that to our supply chain, you know, the end users, and start to show and prove that we have a viable, cost-effective process that gets us to a very high-value product. So in summary, if I've understood you correctly, um, you're getting all the, the ducks in the row, including um, this, including the personnel, the technical personnel being beefed up. You're fully funded. There's the potential of a government loan and it's not uh, too expensive to extract this unique product that you're telling us about. Look, I'll, I'll put it, I'll put it, you know, not, that, not to suggest I am a gambling man, but if people want to take a risk in terms of investing in a junior explorer come developer like us, who've made an amazing discovery, we will obviously continue to spend the, uh, you know, the funds that we have to get the maximum value out of this project. But what we're saying is to go from an explorer who's found a unique, unusual, albeit very large high grade titanium deposit, for us to go from this point to be able to go to the market and say, we've got the process, we know the costs, we know the product, here are the economics. What I'm saying is it, it's design and build this demonstration plant and prove it. That is not a huge, massive capital investment. So that's a pretty good bet if you're a betting man or a woman or whatever, if you wanted to take a punt on us, for not a lot more money, we can deliver massive amounts of value if we demonstrate that the, pro no, that the process it, it works and that the product is of a high quality. That I can't guarantee. I'm honest about that. I can't be absolutely certain. That's why I'm doing the test work. That's why I'm building a demonstration plan. How long will it be before we see that demonstration plant in operation? Well, we're, we're, we're moving at light speed. I mean, we, it's less than, you know, not even 10 months since we first discovered this. You know, I found titanium. We go, oh, we've got titanium. Then we found we've got titanite. So there is you know, an enormous amount of work that's going on behind the scenes. You know, a bit like the duck on the pond. You know, it looks really calm, but my legs are going flat out. So in terms of timing, we're still ambitious, but we're going to try and have the, the, the basic flow sheet, the basic design, you know, on the table, ready to present by the end of this year. The, the starting of the permitting, you know, uh, going through all the, the, the government process, going through the discussions with farmers about where we can put a demonstration plant, all that's going to happen now. We're going to start that work straight away. So, uh, you know, we're not only just putting on process development people, we're getting environmentalists, we're getting in, you know, commercial people to help build that whole process up, you know, the whole process, including permitting, government funding, a lot. So all of that's going to come out this next, uh, you know, eight to 10 months. And then the process of getting into, let's get the uh, demonstration plan, you know, start procuring, start you know, putting it together and get it going will all happen in 2025. A lot to look forward to. Sean Bunn, Managing Director of Empire Metals. Thank you very much. You're welcome.